Welcome to this Miao seminar on Pacosa, an iterative uh, SAT-based uh, MaxSAT solver. And we're very happy to have Tobias Paxian from Freiburg here who will tell us about the Pacosa. So please, Tobias, take it away. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, I'm gonna talk about my iterative SAT-based MaxSAT solver Pacosa the next hour. It's going mainly about two papers we had. Um, the first one was a joint work with Sven Reimann and Bernd Becker about dynamic polynomial watchdog encoding for solving graded MaxSAT, where we um, I, where will I in, um, where will I introduce um, um, my own pseudo Boolean encoding, and the second part I'm going to talk about two preprocessing methods uh, which we in, um, invented for our um, for our MaxSAT solver due to um, some benchmarks we had, joint work with Pascal Raiola and Bernd Becker again. Okay, let's start with the first part of the pseudo-Boolean encoding um, and a short introduction to weighted MaxSAT, which expands the success story of Boolean satisfiability solving. A com it solves combinatorial optimization problems which are used to find the shortest path, plan, execution, smallest explanation, least resource consuming schedule, most probable explanation, and many more. And we introduced there a new efficient algorithm for solving weighted max, uh, max set. So very short introduction, I think most of you should know about um, Boolean formula in conjunctive normal form, which is a conjunction over disjunctions of literals. And um, these disjunctions of literals here are called clauses. And if we um, have then um, a MaxSAT solver, we talk about soft clauses and we try to satisfy as many soft clauses as possible. If we talk about partial MaxSAT solving, which we do in this talk, then we have additionally hard clauses, which has to be satisfied, and soft clauses, where we try to maximize to satisfy as many soft clauses as possible. And then there is weighted partial MaxSAT, in which we try to satisfy the, um, each soft clause has a weight, a corresponding weight WI, and we try to satisfy the maximal weight of satisfied soft clause. As an optimization target, um, we can see it here, um, WA times the satisfied soft clauses. If we add a relaxation literal XI to each clause, we just have to satisfy um, the negated XIs. Um, we just have to maximize over them. I have to give some um, introduction to sorting networks or totalizers here at first, because the encoding is based on them. There are different encoding schemes for pseudo-Boolean um, MaxSAT solving or pseudo-Boolean um, encodings, namely adders, BDDs or sorting networks. And in the sorting networks, there are even merge sorters, bitonic sorters, and many more. Totalizer is not a sorting, uh, sorting network. Um, but I use it like one here mainly. I can exchange the totalizer here by any sorting network in my encoding. How do they work? Um, I have inputs x1 to x4. These are the relaxation literals we've, we've seen before, and I try to um, satisfy as many of them as possible or try to negate as many of them as possible in my encoding to um, satisfy as many soft clauses as possible. But this is a simple sorting network without weights. Then um, I try to satisfy or add y1 to, to the um, to the CNF and I try to satisfy it. If it's possible, then I continue with Y2 and then I try Y3. And if that is not possible anymore, I have a maximal uh, weight satisfied of two or maximal number of soft clauses of two. And um, a pos possible input could look like that. I'm um, having the zeros on the left and all the ones on the right. 
and the sorting network. If we put in weights into the, um, such a sorting network, then we can, um, a naive ver a variant would be um, putting the XIs multiple times into the sorting network and then solving it like before, drawing out Y1, Y2, and sometimes um, or often in such um, in such cases, uh, there are YI satisfied by chance or um, input variables satisfied by chance. So I don't have to go over all of them. Um, sometimes after solving Y1, um, y, uh, Y13 is the next one, and then I already have the solution of uh, maximal 12 um, uh, soft clauses satisfied. The problem of the sorting networks, um, if we talk about totalizers um, as we do, is the complexity. Uh, the complexity is quadratic in the number of inputs, and here the number of inputs is the sum of weights. And this is um, too big for um, to solve for many, many instances as we're talking about millions of soft clauses in the um, actual competitions. So we split the weights up, um, like Bellieu did 2009, I come to that later, but we split them up into their binary representation and um, add to these totalizer weight, two to the power of zero, two to one, two to two, and according to their um, binary representation, the number two is only in the second um, totalizer and the number three in the first and the second, seven is in all three and so on. This can be um, seen as a, um, as a binary adder with carry um, if we look here, two to the power of zero. Um, uh, additionally, we need these tears. I forgot to mention. We need additional tear variables to find the final weight. And if we look at the number of inputs here, two to the power of zero, we have four inputs here. And um, um, then we can calculate that I have to carry to the next um, totalizer two inputs. Um, so two are carried to the next one and I leave out every second in, um, output. I can do that, um, all the outputs are sorted um, and by looking only at every second output, it's still sorted. So I have four outputs and two are carried to the next higher one. And this is a totalizer again, or only one merge encoding of the totalizer. Totalizer is a divide and conquer merge algorithm. And um, here, this is only one merge of the encoding. And I do that again. Um, so I have to carry three to the next um, totalizer. And then finally, I have set one um, till set five as outputs. And now I can go as before with these set one to set five. But each set i represents a weight of four instead of a weight of one, um, with an, um, as we've seen in the naive variant. So because, to be asked, um, this, um, can I ask out, yes. something? So when you're having this picture, if you go back to the previous slide, I should think of um, like which, which boxes you're connecting to the next. So are the ones like being filled from left to right, so that the, the the more significant bits are what you're feeding to the next box, or or how are the ones sorted in at, at the bottom of your blue boxes? Um, so these are all. Um, I, I didn't get it right. I I think you meant um, that all these blue boxes are sorted. The outputs are sorted here at the bottom. So yes, and, and where, case, where have your where are your zeros and where are your ones, right? Because you're you 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 yeah, the bottoms are sorted. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, all the zeros at the left and all the ones at the right, and here at the bottom, all the zeros at the top and all the ones at the bottom. Okay, um, makes I, sense. I, Thanks. Okay. 
And then I have the um, two phases. Um, at first, the coarse convergence phase, um, where I only, in this normal sorting network, I would only look at y4, y8, y12. Um, here, um, I can look at that directly by set one, set two, set three. And later on, I um, um, do the fine conversions phase, um, going to the final weight. Uh, we see that in, in a moment. So for example, set three satisfiable, set four is not satisfiable anymore. Um, so we are in the um, in between nine and 12 input uh, weights are satisfied. And then um, we want to know which uh, how uh, what weight is finally satisfied. So I have to set the at the fine convergence phase the ti's to one, y to one and not to zero. Um, the t's are not bound to any clause, the tear variables. So if I set them to one, I reduce um, the number of inputs here, which um, with the weight two to the power of one. Setting t1 to one um, reduces the number of inputs here and raises up um, the bounds from two to 11, 12 then. So if that's possible to um, satisfy, then we are at 11 to 12. And then finally, if I can set t0 to 1, I'm at the weight 12. And then I have only complexity of n to the power of 2, because uh, in the worst case, at each um, of these totalizers or buckets are um, n inputs. Um, as I have um, n is the number of um, xi's, so um, our soft clauses. The number of soft clauses is quadratic times um, the logarithm of the maximal weight. Um, that's the number of um, blue boxes I have at the top than these buckets or totalizers. So we are way better than at the naive variant. In this example, um, we can see already the difference for encoding the left side. We need 29 variables, 27 binary clauses, and 29 ternary clauses. On the right side, 68 variables, 68 binary clauses, and 135 ternary clauses. So we are already um, much better. Um, Balyud um, et al. 2009 um, introduced um, this scheme but uh, they didn't uh, introduce um, an incremental variant uh, where at each bucket already is a tear variable and I only have to set the tear variables and um, which I can go through all these output variables. This was called the polynomial watchdog encoding um, and they a generalized polynomial watchdog algorithm, and therefore we call our dynamic variant dynamic polynomial watchdog encoding and dynamic generalized polynomial watchdog algorithm. But this is not all. Uh, and for... again, sorry for stopping you again, but the, the what makes it dynamic is that somehow you play around with these, like you don't have, okay, so in the original generalized polynomial watchdog, you know that you're only interested in one bound. Like, is this linear form larger than or smaller than this fixed value? But you're somehow, yeah, it's, it's only... by playing around with the T variables, you can search for like lots of different values at the same time. Is that right? Exactly. That's the that's all what, what it makes dynamic. Um, only playing around with all the T variables and all the output variables. And having it therefore for an incremental maxed solver only with uh, solving with uh, assumptions. Okay, thanks. So, but that's not all. Um, I want to introduce two, uh, three um, optimizations to that algorithm the adder caching, cone of influence encoding, and exact bound encoding. Let's jump in. Adder caching. Uh, this was already introduced in the original paper of 2009 as future possible future work 
for example, if we look here at the input variables x3 and x4, um, is twice encoded here. And in the way a totalizer encodes these, you can encode them only once and merge them together then. So I encode it only once and I have then y1, y2 and reuse it here um, on the first totalizer here. This, in this small example, it reduces um, some variables and some clauses, um, but it's not that easy um, which ones to choose. X2, X4 is used as well in two buckets. And is it better um, to choose um, and, um, many variables or is it better to choose um, few variables like two and reuse them in many of these uh, totalizers? That's unclear. So we, in our implementation with the adder caching, I could solve um, with the Maxat evaluation 2017 benchmarks 453 instances instead of uh, 442 um, with the plane variant. The average median time went down quite a bit. For the commonly solved instances, we have 430 instances, which could solve both of these, the plane and the adder catching variant. So I lost 12 instances as well by um, solving with the adder caching. And the average time went down by a third, the median time by a third, the average number of clauses in millions almost by a third and um, the number of clauses used went, do um, went down almost um, by 50 percent. Do you want to say anything about here we can how see you each find the, the, the substructures? So you, like you, you already said that it's not obvious like how to choose them or like any any strategy that or well, like what do you do or this will come in, in my first strategy um, for this paper uh, for my master thesis uh, back then i um, tried to um, to look um, for at first for equal weights that's the easiest thing to do and all equal weights um, have the same structure in all um, of these totalizers and then um, i was looking for XIs, which are um, um, for, for small um, substructures, which are used in many of the um, of the totalizers, and I did an additional work uh, where I've um, afterwards where I was looking for bigger substructures which could be reused, but that was not that um, great breakthrough. It didn't bring that much more. Finally, the, the biggest gain was out of the um, equal weights in that. Okay, thanks. Okay, and then I, um, on the uh, bottom triangle here, um, are all the instances, uh, each point here stands for an instance. Um, at the left side, we can see uh, which time, uh, how, long I needed to solve it uh, with adder caching. So here about a bit more than 2002, uh, 1,200 seconds. And without uh, adder caching, I needed almost 2,000 seconds. So we can see that it's widespread over the whole square, but there are more instances at the bottom triangle. And uh, which is important here on the right side on the right line, these were instances which I couldn't solve before but um, I can solve them um, with adder caching. But I've lost some instances, which I can see here at the top um, due to uh, variable renaming and using other variable names, maybe um, such that the server wasn't that efficient anymore. Let's look at the cone of influence encoding of the second optimization. If we... Uh, um, solve the instance without any encoding at first and then realize that we have already satisfied a weight of 12 um, then we can continue directly um, trying to solve weight 13 and so i only have to encode set 4 and for encoding set 4 i don't have um, to encode um, the whole encoding it 
um, in this small example, it's, om, um, it's a third less variables and um, half of the clauses almost. And this uh, is true um, by looking only at the needed um, output variables. Um, I go down um, in the mil um, in the average number of clauses I need, it halves the average number of clauses almost. Can I ask here? Yes, sure. Uh, is this similar to what, what Ruben was writing in his incremental totalizers? Is this a similar idea? How you do that? How, how you only encode partially? Is it sort of encode up to that output or is it something else? Um, I, I generate at first um, for the totalizer, I generate um, I don't know the other work you mentioned, um, but I um, generate a graph with all the outputs here at the end, and the outputs are merged is, is a merge of three and two outputs here. So I have three in outputs on the left and the right side, and so it's a binary tree going down, connecting all of these totalizers. And at the end, I can see for set four, I add clauses um, where I need as well um, input, uh, that input and that input. Uh, um, and then I go down the graph and add all these clauses. But your method doesn't necessarily lead to also say Z3 being, you can encode Z4 without encoding Z3 or two. Yes, exactly. Or do you have to? Okay. Oh, I then encode it, Z4 then it, then without it's different. Yes. Yes. Uh, Z3 and Z2. It's only that's, that's encoding set four. And nice. um, for example, I don't so have to encode. Can I ask? You... Yeah, sure. Can I ask something about that. Um, so you say that you can encode set four without encoding set three, let's say. Um, but do you still need all the clauses uh, earlier on in, in, in the encoding that actually would encode set three? Or no, I don't need them. Let's let's see at that point. Um, if I want to encode set three, I, it's it's only logical to think about that. I need either one or two inputs from the top here, and um, for three, I the combination is possible having two inputs here and one input here. But at set four, it's not possible. If I at maximal have two inputs mm -hmm. here. I can leave out the first um, input here. I don't have to yeah, encode yeah. the first input here. So I only need to encode the second one and the third. Okay, great. To have uh, all thanks. combinations. Yeah, okay, thank you. It's more or less like that okay. in the whole graph. Okay. So here again, we see uh, um, a picture which is quite similar to the one before we and before we could solve 442 afterwards 455 with only cone of influence encoding and it's again widespread um, in the top and the lower triangle i've lost some instances but only at the far end uh, where we almost had our 3600 seconds um, already but i won many more instances which weren't solvable before oh sorry Okay, let's look at the third uh, method, the exact bound encoding. Um, at first, I was talking about the cores and the fine convergence phase. Um, at first, I'm looking at the set i's um, going almost logarithmically um, to, to the final result and then refining um, the ti's at the end. But, um, I've tried out, I realized at the end that it's faster looking at the exact weight plus one. So if I have a result um, bigger equal seven, I try it next um, to solve um, the weight eight. That's more efficient um, somehow. Um, as often I'm close to the result already, that's something I realized um, in the act of um, programming my solver. So there, then with, with the exact bound encoding, I could solve 451 instead of 442 um, instances, 439 in common, and the timing went a bit down, the number of clauses and the number of variables went minimal up. Um, so I needed to encode a bit more here. 
sorry, could you explain again what's the idea of the exact bound encoding? I'm afraid I didn't get it. Exact bound encoding is just, um, <clears throat> I solve it. I have the weight seven solved already and I try to solve one more the next time. So I adjust the tears, the TIs, such that I um, enforce the weight, the actual weight plus one in the next solver call. Okay. Is that clear with that? Um, let okay. me think about it. Um, uh -huh. Yes, Keep then, uh, yeah, again, sorry. No, no, I, I, please, please continue. Okay. Perfect. So let's combine the three of them. Instead of 442, I solved then 470 instances and the commonly solved instances are 429. So I lose 13 instances with all three techniques combined. And the average time is halved, the median time. Oui. I'm sorry. Zoom, I've been signed out, but you can still hear me, don't you? <laughs> we can hear you well. I get a message of Zoom that I'm signed out. Okay. Uh, we're still following you. Thanks. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the commonly solved instances um, went all down as before. And we can see here on the right uh, side that I can solve many more instances which weren't solvable before. And I lose some at the top here as well. I compare um, my solver, or I compared my solver with the state of the art of the time, QMAXAT 2017, which uses three different um, um, encodings, the binary adder, modulo totalizer, or the naive variant of the totalizer, which is not a pseudo Boolean encoding per se, it's made for um, non-weighted, but yes, um, I compare with them. Um, with this solver was second in the Maxit evaluation, and I compare it. Um, I've implemented my DGPW solver into QMaxat um, so that I'm being able um, to use their encodings as well. And my new solver chooses between um, my uh, DGPW um, algorithm and the um, binary adder of Warner's. And I've just uh, implemented a heuristic. If the sum of weights, uh, of all weights of the instance is bigger than 400,000, uh, no, smaller than 400,000 or bigger than 2 billion, then I choose my uh, encoding, which is a bit more than 50% of all the instances. And I'm competing in the Maxit evaluation 2018. Um, I've implemented the results in a moment. But let's look at first um, how the different encodings behave. Um, here we can see the totalizer in um, lilac and green, the modulo totalizer, and here on the right, the binary adder and the dynamic um, polynomial watchdog encoding. And here's the timing for each of the encodings um, in the lower triangle. The other encodings were fast in the upper triangle. My encoding was faster. Um, so most of the instances I could solve faster if I could solve them, but there are many instances which were insolvable, but most of them the binary adder could solve. So almost all points here on the right side are blue. That's the binary adder. And on the top side, um, I've solved many instances which the blue one, the binary adder couldn't solve. So I combined these two um, encodings. Can you say something about and why the binary here, adder? Is... I compare the final Paco solver, uh, which chooses between the binary adder and the dynamic polynomial watchdog encoding and QMAXAT. And so many of the instances are solved at the same time, more or less, because they choose the Warner encodings in both um, heuristics. And there are many instances which I can solve faster. And some I've lost a bit of timing. I've lost some instances, but I won many. So before 503 instances, afterwards 522. And compared with the virtual best solver, 
So if in QMaxSat, I would use all three encodings and choose always the best timing of them, um, then 504 could be solved. And of Paco's, um, there's um, so almost all were chosen correctly. And for Paco's, um, choosing between the two um, encodings, um, the virtual best solver can solve 11 more instances, and the virtual best solver over all four encodings can only solve two additional instances. Can you say something about why the additive, but the binary encoder, binary other encoding would be better when it's better? Is it a matter of like that just the, the, the size is too large otherwise, or is it something else? So um, my dynamic uh, polynomial watchdog encoding is quite good in solving very, very big weights, I've realized. So instances where um, the weight is close to, to the bound of, uh, yeah, then, then my solver is quite good. Um, so therefore, um, I have here, um, if the weights are bigger than 2 billion, then my solver is good at it. And the um, Warner's encoding is good if, um, or my solver is bad if we have many, many um, uh, soft clauses because the binary adder is only, uh, adds only linear many or seven times uh, the number of input variables and the input variables are the soft clauses. So it's a linear encoding, um, but the totalizer, the, the standard totalizer can maintain generalized eye consistency. And the, um, um, the polynomial watchdog encoding not per C can maintain, um, maintain it, but it's close to it, um, which they um, have in their original paper written there. So, it's close to maintaining um, this stuff. And um, only by unit propagation, I can find many more uh, results. And in the binary edit, I have to more decisions. But do you know, I mean, if I suppose I measured, um, I don't know, total number of conflicts or total number of decisions, could it be that that the Pacose is still like better according to that metric, but the formulas are, the translation is so large that you're you're losing because you have to handle this large formula, or or could it be I'm, that also somehow the search as such gets better so that you have fewer conflicts with another encoding? Did you look into these kind of things? I yeah, partly, um, as far as I remember, um, the um, I need less decisions for the polynomial watchdog encoding. Um, that's for sure. Um, but the encoding gets huge. Um, so um, if you look at the numbers here, um, on average in the plane variant, 30 million clauses added on average. So if I have a big instance with millions of clauses, it's not solvable anymore for, for my polynomial watchdog encoding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then um, conclusion of the first part um, uh, where I introduced the three uh, um, and your encoding or the dynamic version of the coding and three optimizations to it. Um, finally, I can solve three times small. Um, I have a three times smaller encoding, two times faster in solving the instances. And compared Pacos to QMaxat, I could solve 19 additional instances, two times faster. So, future work, refining the adder caching algorithm, I um, said that already, um, that yes, um, I, I've tried there already something which didn't give this, uh, this gain to publish it, but I've tried there something, and a divide and conquer of the dynamic polymer watchdog encoding, there I did something as well, but then the encoding is closer to the binary adder um, in solving the instances. About that we can talk later if you're interested in. So let's go on. Here are the best solvers. This is from the um, Max MSA uh, Maxat evaluation 2017 talk. These um, slides. So these are the best solvers over the years. So um, how they evolved, 
And here on the right, uh, far right side, we can see Max HS 2016 17, the best solver, um, solved as well the most instances with the MSE 2017 benchmark set. And here in the middle, there is Maxino, QMaxat, MSCG. These solvers are here. And I tried to beat um, QMaxat 2017 with the new encoding, um, which we've seen that it's possible. How does it look 2018? Um, 2018, um, just an interesting um, graph. Here, the contribution to the virtual best solver. QMaxat and Pacosa are sat unsat based solvers. Um, so they had the smallest contribution to the virtual best solver. Later on, we can see how this evolved over the years. And here, the unsat based method um, solved most instances, but um, there are the most solvers as well. And the hitting set like Max HS and LMHS um, are second here. In so this. By Unsat based, is that the same as, as core guided solvers? Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. As far as I understood, otherwise, Jeremias will tell me. <laughs> I think he did the presentation, I'm not sure. Okay, and here are the results um, from 2018. Um, there were introduced a new, to a new solver, RC2 and um, with two different variants. So here on the right side is the RC2 and then Max HS and Pacos. And these both solvers um, solve the same number of instances. Um, Pacos was a bit slower in solving them. And QMaxat is um, fifth here. Um, they introduced a new encoding as well. The um, Redix, um, Redix weighted totalizer here. So they are a bit behind, um, but not that much. So yeah, um, I've almost got the Max HS, which was my big goal of the years before the best solver. Okay, let's go on with the second part on pre-processing for weighted Maxat, joint work with Pascal Raiola and Bernd Becker. Um, we have had an own application with large Maxat instances with more than 1.2 million soft clauses and 30 million hard clauses, um, which are easy to solve, but especially hard for pseudo boolean um, based Maxat solver because they have to add an encoding. And this encoding um, is normally bigger than the number of soft clauses. Um, so it gets quite hard to solve it. Um, I exploited the structure of these instances. Um, yeah, because they have a very special weight distribution. And by efficient, efficiently get a third, first approximation of the final weight, I can um, solve them easier. Here's the application about reconfigurable scan networks. I won't go into that. I introduced two pre-processing techniques, the generalized Boolean multi-level optimization and trimming the Maxat instance. I just go faster over the slides because um, I see the time uh, is almost up. Um, let's oh, look you, at the you have time, so don't worry. I mean, it's you're the speaker. <laughs> so the Boolean multi-level optimization, um, there each weight corresponds to a soft clause here. Um, and um, let's look at this special weight um, distribution. Um, we uh, have four times the weight 100, three times the weight one. Um, so the weight distribution is important. Um, we can split this and solve at first only um, the soft clauses with weight 100 and later on the soft clauses with weight one because the weight difference here is at minimal 100. So solving um, all these higher weighted clauses and then solving the secondary goal um, doesn't make any change. This, this is a work from Eigelich et al. of Ichkai 2009, Boolean multilevel optimization. I generalized this uh, by adding weights to it, but it's not that easy adding weights to it. So here's the pitfall. Um, if in the first goal I, s I solve it and have only the weight 102 satisfied, 
um, and then try to solve the secondary goal. And the 50 is not satisfiable anymore because of the first soft gloss um, I've already pinpointed down by an encoding. Um, it could be that 50 and 101 is satisfiable together, but this is excluded the solution. So I have to look at all weight combinations. Um, so here at the secondary goal, we have a sum of weights of four. And on the right side, I have a difference of all possible weight combinations, which are higher than four, higher equal four. So between five and nine, we have a difference of four. Um, between the sum of five plus nine equals 14, it's the same as the 14 here on the right side or 14 plus nine. Uh, so you get the idea. We have to look at all the weight subsets, all possible weight subsets and their sums and of all differences um, in these. For six weights, it's um, still manageable, but um, imagine thousands or millions of weights. That's almost not, man uh, it's very, very hard um, to, to look at all weight combinations, or two to the power of n weight combinations. I've done this for um, the Maxat evaluation of 2019 benchmarks. Um, the ones which I could um, look at all combinations or until um, a timeout of, um, I think 1,800 seconds I used at that time. Um, there it was possible um, to, to look only at the greatest common divisor and solve um, and being able of divide um, all um, of these instances um, as well. So what's uh, this sufficient criteria? If the greatest common divisor of the first goal is bigger equal than the uh, sum of weights of the secondary goal, then it's enough then I can divide it, splitting the weights up and solve the instances subsequently. And this was um, sufficient. Okay, this is um, the generalization of Boolean multilevel optimization. And then we can look at the second variant, trimming the Maxat instance. It um, is able to exclude always unsatisfiable soft clauses and find the solution close to the optimum fast. So um, with that, I can largely uh, reduce my encoding size. It combines backbone computing, the unset core with approximation techniques, more or less. It's a greedy. So is the idea, so sorry, is the idea here that somehow you, like you can get a solution, first solution before even starting to translate and thanks to that you have a sort of, you know what in, more about the solution, you can use this to, to to get a smaller encoding somehow? Exactly, exactly, that's the idea. Um, by excluding soft clauses, um, I get a smaller encoding and by um, finding a solution close to the optimum already um, with the um, cone of influence encoding, I largely can reduce my encoding size if it's already in the um, corners of the totalizer. So if I'm right at the bottom or at the at the corners of the outputs, it's um, much easier to solve um, a totalized encoding. So how does it work? Let's assume each of these um, squares stands for a soft clause. For example, S1 to S5, five soft clauses in one um, column. I shuffle all the soft clauses and um, each of these columns then represents um, one clause. In the unweighted case, um, I try to satisfy one out of five um, soft clauses, uh, one out of five soft clauses exactly. So the green ones are the certified, one, uh, certified ones. Um, and then I can continue. If it's satisfiable, I, um, in the next step, I pinpoint um, the soft clauses which are already satisfied. Um, that means I add them as, um, as an assumption to the next solver call. I put them out of the, um, of the, um, um, of the set which I want to satisfy and then try again 
and making the columns smaller in the next solver call and try to satisfy one out of three or one out of two. But what's, uh, if, if it's unsat, I cannot satisfy it, then I increase the size of the columns and try to satisfy it until either I have only one column left um, and I cannot satisfy one more soft clause or, um, um, or all soft clauses are satisfied. In the second, um, and the second time um, when I run this, I don't pinpoint uh, the soft clauses after each solver call. Um, I leave them open and I only choose soft clauses which were never satisfied until that moment. I, so my final goal is to satisfy each soft clause at least once. So with, with the first run, I try to have a big, uh, a big weight satisfied already in local optimum. And with the next runs, I try to satisfy each soft clause at least once. If that's possible, um, then, then I'm fine with the um, Trimaxat algorithm. If not, um, I can exclude soft clauses, which are never satisfiable um, exactly. The weighted variant uh, favors higher weights. Um, the good thing is that soft clauses can be satisfied by chance. It's not like that, that always only one soft clause is satisfied um, in each column. Most times there are two or more already satisfied, so I can throw out more at once. Um, exactly. So the workflow of these two pre-processing techniques, at first I um, do the generalized Boolean multi-level optimization, then I have all the sub-goals to satisfy. I start with the sub-goal with the highest weights, do Trimaxat and solve the instance at an encoding to pinpoint um, the already satisfied weight and continue with the next sub-goal. Until finally I've solved the instance here on the right side and then I can print the result. I used um, the Maxat solvers from 2019 to compare, um, and I implemented these techniques into PACOS and QMaxat, so I can um, use them with GBMO and Trimaxat and without, and compared with all state-of-the-art solvers of 2019. So I had two benchmark sets. Um, the first one, our own application with 1.2 mil 1 million soft clauses and 30 million hard clauses at maximal and um, all the Maxit evaluation benchmarks with a one hour timeout. With application benchmark set, I had a timeout of 20 minutes because um, in the application we had to solve many of these instances and otherwise it wouldn't be, um, it couldn't be handled. Here are the results for my PACOSA um, framework in the 2020 version. Um, so without any of these pre-processing environment, um, our own application benchmarks. So um, you can see that with Trimaxat, I can solve more instances with only GBMO even more and combined Trimaxat and GBMO, I can solve already all of the instances in less than 200 seconds. Let's compare this with the um, state-of-the-art solvers of 2019. It's called RC218 because it didn't change um, from 2018 to 2019. This was still the best solver in 2019 and the weighted instances. And uh, we can see that QMAXAT um, struggles in the 2017 and the 2018 variant. The Radix totalizer and um, the heuristic choosing between the th three um, um, the three encodings, which I showed um, in the first talk or in the first half of the talk. And then we have um, PACOS in the 2019 version, um, RC2, which was best in the competition, UWR Maxat, MaxHS, and now our, um, our solver with the preprocessing environment. So, these three solvers can solve all of the instances, but mine can solve them fastest with the pre-processing uh, environment. 
So here we um, compared QMAXAT 2017 with PACOS and in the 2019-2020 variant. And we can see the gain in the MAXAT evaluation benchmarks um, only solving um, with QMAXAT 17 with the pre-processing environment. Um, here on the left side, yellow, the PACOSA 2019, and with the pre-processing, PACOSA 2020, um, with out and with the framework. And here are the instances, the lower triangle, again, the instances which I can solve faster with the pre-processing environment. So almost all of them are in the lower triangle. Uh, some exceptions are to that. The results of the 2019 evaluation benchmarks. Um, so we can see here in red, PACOS 2019, and here in dark red, PACOS 2020, QMAXAT 2018 without and with the pre-processing environment. And um, so MAXHS is in between. Um, we, they they um, did some new stuff on their max solvent that year as well. So I overturned them again a bit, at least. And here on the right side is um, UWR Maxat and RC2. The interesting thing is the best solver combination, as for the all the previous years, is uh, Max HS combined with one of the SAT ansat based solvers. Um, before it was uh, QMAXAT, and afterwards, um, we, if we use our um, PACO solver, um, this is the best combination which you can do with two solvers or with n sol any n solvers run subsequently with a timeout of 3600 divided by n each. And here are the results for 2021. These are the competing MAXAT solvers in the weighted MAXAT um, category. So PACOS is fifth. Um, so we have some solvers, oh no, fourth. Um, Cash HW MAXAT, U, Max HS and UWR MAXAT are faster in solving the instances. And the exact solver and new solver there this year um, is slower. MaxHS introduced the abstract course in 21, I think, and therefore um, they are quite faster again. But I have told you, um, rem reminding, uh, uh, having that in mind, the contribution to the virtual best solver. Here we see it again for 21, and there um, Pacose um, has the best, the highest contribution to the virtual best solver. So um, especially for small instances, but as well for some bigger ones with big weights, Pacosa was fastest to solve them. Um, even if we compare all the methods, so UWR Maxat cash WM cash W Maxat and exact, I think these three are answered cores and Max HS is the hitting set technique. So between all the techniques, even then Max Epacose solved most of the instances fastest. A short conclusion, um, I introduced the two pre-processing techniques um, and the experimental results. Um, they are outperformed all evaluation 2019 solvers with their own benchmarks and improved the top solver combination and my solver in the evaluation 2019 benchmark set. Exactly. Um, for 21, for, for the that hand in, I improved um, as well a bit um, the binary adder by um, introducing a heuristic to choose between two compression variants. Um, yeah, but I won't go into that. If you're interested, we can talk about that later. A short outlook, um, then I'm concluding my talk. Um, yes, at the moment I'm in um, in code rework of my polymer watchdog encoding. I've chosen to to do there some code rework because that's a um, lot of code from my um, master thesis. Um, I've 
added in that code rework Max Pre 2, a uh, very cool preprocessor for uh, Maxat solving. I have some results in backup slides as well. And um, I'm working at a new approximate merger encoding. It's only an approximate encoding, um, but I want to find finally an exact solution with that as well. The approximate variant has the goal to add um, less clauses to it. And a new pseudo Boolean encoding, which is a variation more or less of the approximate version. And then um, incremental maxat, which I already implemented for last year's evaluation, but then shortly before the hand in, I found bugs in it. So I couldn't hand it in. But that's the plan for next year. It's maxat evaluation. With that, I conclude um, the first part of the talk and I'm open to questions. Thank you, Tobias. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so questions, comments. Uh, one comment, I, I applaud your sort of integrity in not handing in a buggy incremental solver because most of the solvers that were handed in did have some bugs that were fixed only after the submission deadline. <laughs> okay, I hope to, to be able to hand it in for next year. Let's see. Yes. no one else has anything, then of, for fairly obvious reasons, I am interested in seeing your backup slides with Max Pre 2, but maybe if someone has any questions. Or um, the question is um, how we should continue. I don't have prepared more slides, uh, only three or four additional slides, um, but um, in the, should we add a second half or? <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking we can see if there are any more questions and then we'll, we'll take a break. I think a short break is good, and during that break we can we can talk about uh, whether we continue online or offline or how we do it. But so one thing, so so there seems to be I, I wanted to understand like the complementary strength of these different approaches. I mean, it seemed to be fr from this slide you had with contributions. So core guided search contributed most, but you said that. This is also because there are more corrugated solvers and then smaller but still significant contributions from hitting set approaches and 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 linear set on set. Is there a good understanding of why certain approaches work for um, certain types of benchmarks? Like, could you tell in advance when you see a benchmark like, ah, yeah, I think Pacose will be good for this one, or or no, this is probably a core guided problem. Yeah, yes, I think I can give an idea, or maybe an idea I have. Maybe Yamias can help me a bit. Um, but here at the, um, you you've said that the um, unsat core based um, solver are best individual best solver that was true for 2017 and uh, no, a 2018 benchmark evaluation uh, maxed evaluation and here the 2021 maxed evaluation um Pacosa, so the my solver the sat unsat based um, solver was best uh, or had the best contribution individual best solver Oh, sorry, my apologies. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But um, so that changed a bit. So this uncore guided Maxat solver still had the um, second greatest impact to, to it. Um, but I overcome them um, maybe because of, of the pre-processing techniques. I haven't looked at it um, with my old variant of the solver. Um, maybe because of the um, instances changed. Um, but looking at the instances, yes, it's already possible to tell if my solver is good at them or not. I think mainly if um, the number of soft clauses is small um, or the weights are really, really big, then the SAT unsat based um, or the polynomial watchdog encoding is very good for very big weights. 
So I uh, finished best in, in one of the um, families with very big weights there, um, already 2018 and I think 21 again. And um, yes, and if there are only a few um, soft clauses, then I don't have to add um, a big encoding and I don't have to calculate a lot of stuff. So then it's only glucose running over the instance and have ha having some thousand additional in, um, clauses. Then uh, my solver is quite good in solving them. But even with 1.2 million um, instances, most of them unsatisfiable. Uh, um, so I think only five of them were satisfiable of the soft clauses with the 1.2 million. Um, but you have to find that out. And this was done with the pre-processing technique. Trimaxat could find that out, that only a few are satisfiable. And with my encoding, I could only look at is one more satisfiable at the end. So because of that, Trimaxat was there this good. In the evaluation benchmarks, mostly um, GBMO, um was responsible for the big gain here but also trimax had solved two or three additional instances does this answer more or less yes thanks so um any any final questions before we um take a break maybe you said it and I just missed it, but just to be sure, in the in the multi-level optimization, once you solve the higher level, you then fix the solution, right? So, so the, it's no, it, no, it's one of the what? Uh, once you fix the, once you solve a higher level of in the multi-level yes. technique, then you fix that solution, and then you go on to the next level, right? Exactly. Or um, yeah, yeah. This I, is what I, I don't and I do not fix the solution. But um, I pinpoint the weight with encoding. If okay. I would fix the solution, um, I would add the soft clauses as unit clauses and prevent all other possible solutions. Um, there, there could be uh, more solutions with the same weight. Um, I, could, I would prevent them um, from being solved together with the lower weights then, which would be right. maybe possible. Yeah, I was gonna. Um, it's not clear to me. Of course, if you want to um, like enumerate solutions, then you can't do that. But but it's not clear to me that the one solution you find wouldn't work. But maybe maybe it's maybe it is to you. I think, no, but, but, but I think that's a very interesting question as well. <laughs> no, but the problem is, I mean, you can't fix it. I guess you know now what the optimal large weight is, but there might be several different solutions and they might give you different values on the low weight component no so you it's like you, exactly. you can't example, commit to a high weight solution in advance before you if i pinpoint the weight 14 here and um, 14 is the weight combination i can um, find with 5 plus 9 is 14 as well but i've my solver um, gave me the solution um, in the first goal here um, okay, 14, you can solve the weight 14. I add the soft clause 14 um, to my solver and due to that soft clause, I cannot solve any soft clause of the secondary goal because they um, sure. um, contradict each other. But maybe there is a solution overall possible with the weight five plus nine plus any other of the soft clauses um, from the secondary goal. So I cannot pinpoint uh, um, or I cannot add um, the soft clause um, as a unit clause to, to the formula. Mm. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? Because otherwise I think we'll uh, thank the BS again. Thank you. And welcome. We're